a very special feeling to be a deck artist because it's a, it's a very warm family and good friends. It's, it's, a, it's also a small family. We feel like we are really a family and not a, one of those big international uh, things. And all the producers, the technicians and the directors, as well as all the artists working for DECA, uh, we all feel very good together. You see, I'm always uh, being very concerned about the quality of sound and I think DECA has been uh, well known from the very, very, very beginning uh, for their wonderful sound, you know. And uh, well, all that together makes this family happy. The way in which we work in Decca, uh, I think, is unique. In, in the recording business because there's total unity and harmony between um, the producers, production staff and the engineering staff and also the artists as well. Because we operate broadly on the basis that you've got to have a good hall because musicians can't perform in bad halls. So you've got to have a good hall to start with. If it's a good hall it will have a good acoustic. You can use microphones then which will record that acoustic and uh, you don't need to go to artificial means of generating some kind of electronic uh, large hall sound. My job then is to make sure the venue which we're going to record um, is to be found, not always necessarily the, um, the hall in which the orchestra plays in in its own city. If that's not good enough, then we go to endless lengths to try and find a place that um, is suitable. And I think the case in point is Montreal with Charles Rutois and um, the orchestra uh, symphonique Montréal, and it took something like about a year before we were happy with the venue. That is an example, a good example, the best example of the um, whole location of search. It's not always as difficult as that. It doesn't stop us looking for the, what is the essential quality of a good hall, which is a rich sound which we will use the acoustics as much as possible with our microphone technique. Other record companies, you may find uh, individual recording engineers doing their own thing in the way that they choose to put microphones out, the sound they're trying to get, their use of the hall acoustic, their use of artificial reverberation. We have, have I guess, in DECA, more of a house approach although it isn't a house set of rules that anybody has to work by, but it is kind of house-evolved uh, recording process, and I think that's what gives you the Decca sound. I liked the, the openness of the sound, the clarity, the richness. It was just a complete new world, but the actual omni-microphone technique pattern that we use has been uh, with Decca for, since the 1950s. And we've tried other systems, we try other systems all the time, uh, and we always come back to this um, basic pattern. And there's no restraints on anybody to have to use the system. Everybody just feels that it is the best, does work, and uh, that's why we still use it. No engineer, balance engineer uh, can become one just uh, within a year. It's usually five or six years before they're, they're actually um, fully fledged. All our uh, present engineers, in fact, are um, in-house bred people. Keeping it all digital means we, ma we maintain the quality of the signal all the way through and can only then do functions that are necessary to improve things without having the compromises. Digital has given us now a, a complete uh, a canvas which is, which is extremely clear and, 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 the, and a light, if you like to say, on the sound, which is, a, as I uh, always like to call it, like a painting a picture in sound. It, it's so much more clear now. We 
we've got a tape library in Decca with 75,000 reels of analog tape. And this is really the lifeblood of a record company and it's all slowly deteriorating. Arthur said to me, we've got to make a digital recorder so that we can archive the material much better. We can regenerate it even when the digital tape starts falling apart. I said, I know how to make a digital recorder. With my colleagues in the research lab, we can build one if that's what you really want. And that was in a November of something like 1977. Uh, by May, we had built our first digital recorder. By June, we'd built a second one. And by the end of September, we had a two-machine digital editing machine working. And we were all very proud of this. Somebody had the bright idea we should go to Vienna and do some recordings uh, in Vienna just before Christmas and to follow it with a recording of the New Year concert. Now, of course, this was nothing to do with preserving the tape library. We've only, in the last couple of years, I suppose, even got round to anything to do with the tape library. And due to the ADRM process, we were able to rejuvenate some of these tapes. And of course, we make the archive digital copy. So it finally did happen. ADRM is uh, a DECA slogan, if you like, a DECA term, which was applied to the process of handling the library masters, which were all, of course, analog tapes, and getting them as good as possible for release on compact disc. It hadn't got any technical side when I joined it. They were still working on acoustic recording. Uh, and electrical recording was only just coming in. Just before the outbreak of war, we listened to some BBC transmissions of FM. Uh, and the quality was so fantastic that we knew commercially that if we didn't do something with the record, the record would, would die. Uh, so we decided then to, to really put the effort into it and develop a full frequency range recording which really revitalised the gramophone industry. frequency range recording. Without that you couldn't have, have uh, produced the stereo record that we ultimately reproduced. They go along together but uh, certainly FFRR was the thing that put DECA really on the map. We were the first people in the business to reproduce stereo records. Today I think the there is a big difference to particularly our post-production compared to many other companies. Because we've developed our own digital facility, we now are in a position to make a digital recording on a session and keep the signal in that digital domain all the way through to the customer with his CD player. The actual editing process is totally different from analogue. At DECA we have the digital mixer, which again has been designed by our own engineers, um, meaning we can do three machine joins, enabling us to do slow crossfades between take, and thus getting a much better result. We we're totally digital from start to finish. I also personally find working to higher standards very important. Um, I like to try and get the best result I can and I feel we have the facilities to do this. is married to this company called Decca Records, which is, I think, is unique. I think I am the only one. I don't know any other artist who, over 40 years, 
contract with the same company without fail. I think that speaks for both of us, I suppose. I think there's a good relationship between an artist and between, shall I say, a Decca team composed of engineers and producers. Furthermore, they seem to have heard of the Decca sound and would like to have that. It is a natural sound. I think it's the sound the public would like to hear. It's great for the artists because they feel a very strong connection with the company and, and it is almost like a family in a way because uh, the Decca company works with with their artists over the years and they get to know um, of the artists. And it means that I'm with, with, with a company that I love because everyone at Decca that I have met are the most, the most wonderful people. I've always admired this sound. And the reason why I have admired this sound, they, I feel they have the best engineers that can be found today in the recording industry. It's good to work with these people. Nobody's perfect, but they are as close to, to, be, to trying to be perfect as you can imagine. The business of being Hogwood and the Academy of Ancient Music with Decca and Flory Legend series on Wazulia means that we have the same home when we have particular ambitions. We know that we have somewhere we can go and say we'd like to do this. It's consistency, I think, which is the important thing in the long run. The consistency of the quality. Oh, dear, oh, dear.